Ahab and Naboth's vineyard. There was a man in Jezreel called Naboth, and he had a vineyard in Jezreel, right next door to the palace of Ahab, the king of Samaria, or Israel. Ahab said to Naboth, please can you give me your vineyard so that I can have it for a herb garden. It's near my house, and I'll give you a better vineyard than that. Or if you prefer, I'll give you the equivalent in money. But Naboth said to, Nab to Ahab, God would forbid me to do this, that I should sell you the inheritance of my fathers. Because what happened in Israel was that you were given land, your family were given land by God when they first settled the land under Joshua. And you weren't supposed to sell that land, but to pass it on to your children. And so you shouldn't just sell it or swap it for something else. And that is a principle to show that we should all pass on to our children something. And the most valuable thing that we've got is our knowledge of Jesus. So times have changed. But here we are, all these years later, thousands of years later, and I'm talking to you about the Bible and passing on to you, as I hope if Jesus stays away, you'll pass on to your children the most valuable thing that we've got, which is our knowledge of God and our relationship with God. So Naboth refused to sell or give his vineyard to Ahab. And Ahab came back into his house very upset and cranky because of the word which Naboth had spoken to him. Well, wasn't he always, well, wasn't he spoiled when he was a child? Ahab? I guess he was spoiled. Well, yeah, I mean, he was the king, so I suppose he was used to it. And Jezebel, his wife, was the daughter of the king of Sidon, who was not, of course, an Israelite. So, yeah, you're right. This is spoilt child syndrome, and it goes on to when you're older. But I want it. Why can't I have it? And so he, he gets cranky and sulky and goes, seems, to his bedroom to have a sulk. What means sulky? Well, when somebody cries and goes off to their room because they didn't get what they in wanted a in a huff, that's right. So Ahab got like this because Naboth had said to him, I won't give you nor sell you the inheritance of my fathers. So Ahab laid himself down on his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. So I think the Bible is really presenting him, as you say, as a child, though he's a king. He goes to his bedroom and turns away his face from everybody and just looks at the wall, really like a child. So what it shows you there is that how you are as a child sort of continues on, really, to how you will be as an adult. And that's why Mummy and Daddy are always trying to encourage you to change now. It's because who you are now is who you'll be when you're older. And... God wants us to be his children, not just when we're adults, but right now. Well, Jezebel, his wife, you know, she was a bad woman. She came to Ahab and she said to him, why are you so upset and why aren't you eating your food? He said to her, because I spoke to Naboth and said to him, give me your vineyard for money or I'll give you a better vineyard for it. And he said, I won't. Jezebel, his wife, said to Ahab, are you really the king of Israel? Get up and eat some food and let your heart be merry. I'll get you the vineyard of Naboth. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters to all the elders of the city who lived with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters saying, Proclaim a big festival, like a party, and set Naboth on high among the people and set two men against him and let them falsely testify against him, saying, Naboth cursed God on the king, and then carry him out and stone him to death. So the men of the city, the elders, and all the nobles there, did as Jezebel had told them. They made a festival and set Naboth on high among the people, and two base fellows came in and testified against him, against Naboth. What, what did they do to him? I can't really get it. Well... Under the law of Moses, if you blasphemed, if you said bad things against God, then you could be stoned to death. Well, I mean, set high among the people. Oh, well, they put him up in a place where, in the, in the party, 
where everyone could see him. So this was done very publicly. So these two men then said, We heard Naboth cursing God and the king. And there were two of them. So they said, Yeah, he's telling the truth. I was there as well. It just shows that people telling lies is not a new thing. So they carried Naboth out of the city and stoned him to death with stones. And they told Jezebel. And as soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth was dead, she said to Ahab, Get up and take the vineyard of Naboth which he wouldn't give you for money. Naboth is dead. And so when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, he got up and went to the vineyard and took it. But the word of God came to Elijah, saying, Go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel. He is in the vineyard of Naboth, where he's gone to take it. Tell him, saying, Thus says the Lord, Have you killed and also taken possession? Tell him, saying, Thus says the Lord, In the place where dogs licked the blood of Naboth, dogs will lick your blood, Ahab. Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me, my enemy? He replied, I have found you, because you have sold yourself to do evil in the eyes of the Lord. I will bring evil on you, and I will completely sweep you away, and will cut off from Ahab every male, and I will make your family like the family of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. And like he was the one who started to reign over over the ten tribes when Solomon died. I'm going to make your family like their family for the great provocation with which you've provoked me to anger and have made Israel to sin. So God gets provoked to anger. He can get really angry by this kind of thing. And also the example that was set by Naboth was leading other people in Israel into sin. And God also spoke of Jezebel, saying, The dogs will eat Jezebel by the fortress of Jezreel, by the wall of Jezreel. The dogs will eat him who dies of Ahab in the city, and the birds will eat him who dies in the field. There was none like Ahab who sold himself to do what was evil in the eyes of Yahweh, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. So you've got to marry someone who will encourage you and not stir you up to do what is wrong. He worshipped lots of idols. But when Ahab heard these words of Elijah, he tore his clothes and put dust on his flesh, didn't eat, and lay in sackcloth and walked softly. And the word of God came to Elijah, saying, Do you see how Ahab humbles himself before me? Because he humbles himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil on his family. So it shows that God is very sensitive to repentance and to feeling really humble because Ahab was awful and he genuinely felt sorry for what he'd done. And even though God had said, oh yes, this, that and the other is going to happen to Ahab, all the same, God changed, if you like, his mind and let Ahab not have that punishment because... God is so sensitive to repentance. So it's a great encouragement that if even someone like Ahab can repent, well, so can we. So it's never too late to repent and turn back to God.